Hello everyone, my name is Zhi Haojiang. I'm a PhD candidate from the Real-Time and Embedded Systems Lab in University of Pennsylvania. Today we are presenting our model-based design framework for medical device software, which is mostly designed using MATLAB and Simulink. We will demonstrate our work using implantable cardiac pacemaker as case study. In this video, we will first explain the problem with medical device software development and evaluation and how we can use model-based design to solve those problems. If you are not familiar with how the heart and the pacemaker works, we have a short introduction video to explain them. Then we will discuss how we abstract the heart as models so that we can evaluate the safety and efficacy of the pacemaker software in closed loop. In the next section, we will discuss our work on pacemaker software model verification, which is the first step in the model-based design. Then we will discuss how we translate the verified pacemaker model to verify the imp implementation using MathWorks code generation toolchain. In the end, we use an improper closed loop pacemaker behavior as case study to demonstrate how we can identify the behavior at different stages of the software development. Everyone has heard about Toyota car recalls, where a malfunctioning car can cause a lot of damage on the road, and malfunctioning implantable devices like pacemaker or defibrillator can cause serious injury or even death of a patient. In fact, during 1990 to 2000, over 600,000 of these devices are recalled, and as the complexity of the software increases, increasing percentage of the recalls are due to software issues. It is thus essential to maintain the safety and efficacy of the device software. The pacemaker is a typical cyber-physical system. There are several challenges for developing safety software for the pacemaker. The pacemaker is an autonomous device and there is very little human interaction once the device is implanted. This means that the device has to be able to operate under all possible heart conditions without causing catastrophic failures. A pacemaker has only two to three leads inside the heart, which sends local electrical events, thus its diagnosis capability is very limited. The pacemaker may confuse when two distinct heart conditions have the same input sequence. With the same leads, the pacemaker can deliver electrical pacing, which can only increase the heart rate. These limited capabilities make evaluating the pacemaker performance very difficult. The pacemaker senses and paces the heart, but in order to evaluate the pacemaker performance, we have to take into account the influence of the heart rate on the rest of the body, which account for overall health of the patient. This would significantly increase the difficulty for pacemaker evaluation. In order to evaluate the pacemaker software, we have to know what requirement it needs to satisfy. However, due to the limited capability of the pacemaker, the software requirements are implicit, which is to improve or maintain the current heart condition. And there are multiple criteria for improvements. An algorithm aimed for short-term healthiness may be harmful in long term. Without unified and explicit requirement, it is very difficult for regulatory agencies like FDA to evaluate the safety of the pacemaker software. During pre-market device certification, the FDA requires the proof for both the safety and efficacy of the device itself and the rigorousness of the design process. Currently, the state-of-the-art evaluation method for the device is open-loop testing, and there is no formal way to maintain the traceability of the requirements during the development process. So our motivation of the project is what are the problems for this evaluation method and how can we improve them during the model-based design. So what is wrong with open-loop testing? Pacemaker has been around for several decades and the device manufacturers have recordings for closed-loop executions of different pacemakers under different heart conditions. When a new pacemaker is being developed, they replay the heart signals in those closed-loop scenarios into the new pacemaker and compare its output to the original outputs. However, the new pacemaker may have different outputs which can change the state of the heart. Open-loop testing does not cover these aspects. What is the problem with this? For those closed-loop executions which are desired behaviors, the new pacemaker is expected to have the same output. 
Those cases can be used to prove similarity for those new devices to the old devices during the 510k certification. However, for those closed-loop executions which are undesired behaviors, open-loop testing is not applicable. Even the new pacemaker has different output than the original output. That does not mean that the undesired behavior is eliminated by the new pacemaker. The new output from the new pacemaker may change the state of the heart, so the test case becomes invalid as soon as the new output differs from the original ones. Then how do we guarantee that the undesired behaviors are eliminated by the new pacemaker? The heart and the pacemaker forms a closed loop system where output of the pacemaker changes the state of the heart. So instead of using recorded test cases to represent different heart conditions, we developed a heart model which simulate the electrical behavior of the heart and respond to pacemaker outputs. The model is also implemented on hardware to test pacemaker in closed loop. So what is the problem with traditional software design? Traditionally, the software development starts from the safety and efficacy requirements that are developed by domain experts. Together with software engineers, they develop the software specifications to satisfy the requirements. Then, together with the electrical engineers, the specifications are implemented onto hardware. As we can see that there are three distinct documents, but there is no formal way to maintain the traceability from the requirements to the implementation, meaning that we cannot guarantee that the implementation satisfies the requirements. Model-based design is a method to alleviate the problem. Instead of software specification, a system model is used to represent the behaviors of the system. The requirements are translated into formal properties. Together with an environment model, the closed-loop system model is verified against the properties using model checking techniques. Model checking ensures that the software specification satisfies the requirements. Using a code generation toolchain, the implementation of the system can be generated from the system model. The system model can also be used to generate test cases to prove the conformance between the model and the implementation. So our goal is to develop medical device software using model-based design to increase confidence in safety. We develop a model-based design toolchain for pacemaker software development. At the verification level, we have a set of non-deterministic heart models which covers different heart conditions. Together with a time automata model of the pacemaker, the closed-loop system is verified in model checker WUPO against safety properties. Using the tool WOOP2SF, which is a MATLAB script developed by us, the WUPA model of the pacemaker can be rigorously translated into stateful chart. We also have deterministic heart models in Simulink, which can perform closed-loop simulation with the pacemaker model. Using the Simulink coder, the stateful chart of the pacemaker can be translated into C code and implemented on any embedded platform. Using this automated toolchain, we can rule out discrepancies introduced by manual translation between layers. Together with our heart model implementation, we can ensure all properties satisfied at the verification level still holds after implementation.